In the scenic landscapes of Thuringia near Jena, the one can see a big white dome belonging to an observatory named after Karl Schwarzschild. Here's one of the first in the series of two-meter telescopes built by the famous Karl Zeiss optical plant. Let's ask Dr. Eike Günther to tell a few words about this telescope. Okay, um, so uh, this is the Tautenberg Schmidt telescope. It has an aperture of two meters when it's used in the uh, spectroscopy mode. And we can convert it into a Schmidt telescope by adding a Schmidt corrector plate of one meter 34 in aperture, which is a glass plate. And in the imaging mode, the focal length is four meter. And we use it together with a CCD camera, which has a field of view of 50 by 50 arc minutes. Uh, the telescope is now a little bit more than 50 years old. It was commissioned in November uh, 1960s. So we just had our 50 year anniversary where we made a, a big meeting and, and party and so on. And, uh, uh, so it's a, in, in that sense, it's an old telescope, but on the other hand, it's a modern telescope because we renovated it. And it has a second life now. Yes, yes. And uh, it's still very much like a classical telescope. It has a moving mass of 65 tons. Uh, so that's, that's actually a lot. <laughs> and the dome itself has a moving mass of 180 tons, 20 meters in diameter, so it's a, a very large equipment. So this telescope saw its first light in 60s. Most of his life it was a classic schmidt cassegrain coder system with a big solid cast block and heavy spherical mirror. Well, by the way, here it is, now in the museum of the short optical plant. But why is it there now? That's because the telescope has gone through the major upgrade and its primary mirror was replaced by light Cital mirror from the cast block done in Russia. All systems were upgraded with a brand new electronics, fully automated to get a new life. It's very simple to operate the telescope. Um, you can just click onto an object and uh, then the telescope tells whether it's above the horizon or below the horizon and uh, all you have to do is then say go <laughs> and a little light switches on in the dome so that you can see the telescope moving and the dome rotates to the correct position and the telescope also and we also hear how it is doing above. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. And, and, and we hear how the dome is rotating. So the dome is at the correct position and now only the telescope moves to uh, the position where the star is. And uh, there's not so much to say. These are the right ascension and the declination where the telescope is pointing the Julian date. Mm -hmm. And uh, all these kinds of useful information. The elevation, the azimuth is also here. Mm -hmm. And actually these plots are very helpful because they say um, how long you can continue uh, observing this object mm -hmm. until it gets uh, down, down. Ground, down to the horizon. Here's a little line when, when it's only 30 de degrees above the horizon, so roughly at this point one should stop. Actually, the computer knows when uh, when it gets too close to the horizon and then stops, but the observer should also be informed how long it will take. Now, uh, we have daytime now, but otherwise during the night, this is the TV camera or the screen for the TV camera, which would uh, show the stars we are looking at. Um, there are two TV cameras. One is looking through this 30 centimeter finding telescope mm -hmm. and um, this is used for guiding or for acquisition to know uh, if we are on the correct field and so on. A CCD Schmidt camera 2K by 2K pixels was installed there. Its field of view is about 42 by 42 angular minutes and pixel size 24 microns. 
There's faint object spectrograph and also HLS spectrograph with resolution up to 67,000. Uh, during full moon time, we converted to the QD mode, which is equipped with a high resolution um, shell spectrograph with a resolution of 65,000. It's a relatively new spectrograph and uh, we are using it for searching for extrasolar planets. Actually, we have found a number of extrasolar planets already and we use it mostly for high precision radio velocity work and uh, a little bit more than half the time it's used in spectroscopy. We also have a third spectrograph which we use in the Naismith focus and uh, this is the so-called faint object spectrograph which is basically to observe relatively faint objects, uh, faint stars uh, and galaxies and so far. Now Tautenberg Observatory participates in many European scientific programs to observe, for example, asteroids, hunt for exoplanets, following aftermaths of the gamma ray bursts, studying active galaxies' cores, various jets from young stellar objects, seeking for a brown dwarfs, and so on. Observatory cooperates with the current projects to study exoplanets. Uh, we are in a collaboration, uh, which is the so-called Crow satellite uh, collaboration. Crow is a satellite, mm -hmm. and it observes uh, fields. And we are looking for planets which are transiting the star. That is, um, we are looking at stars, and the planet is crossing in front of the star. And uh, because the satellite is in space, it can measure the dimming of the star because a, a black object is uh, crossing the stellar disk to a very high precision, uh, better than one in 10,000. Uh, and that's not really possible from the ground. And uh, in this way, we can detect the transits of very small planets. Now, of course, the satellite is nice to detect these transits, but when we just measure the transit, we only get the ratio of the radius of the star to the ratio of the radius of the planet. So what we need is the true radius of the star. We need the stellar mass and we have to measure the mass of the uh, uh, planet by, what? by, by what? using, yes, exactly, radio velocity me uh, measurements. And so when we get a good candidate, we are first observing it with say medium size or small telescopes mm -hmm. and the first thing is to take a spectrum of the star to see if it's solar-like or if it's a giant. If it's a giant star of course then the the object which is transiting is big and not very interesting for us. So what we do here is we take a spectrum with the low resolution spectrograph of all the candidates first mm -hmm. in order to know if it's an interesting object or an object which is no longer interesting. Mm -hmm. If we did this, uh, the next step is actually taking images. The satellite is very good but the imaging quality is limited because mm -hmm. um, the images slightly defocused to get a high photometric accuracy and for that reason we are taking an image to be sure that the transit is really on the on the bright star mm -hmm. but not on a faint star uh, within the photometric mass of, of the, the satellite. So imaging is then the next step and the third step is radio velocity measurements for which we are also using our telescope, but uh, also when it's a really a very low mass object, then we actually need a bigger telescope. So we are then using also the, the VLT and we are also using the very large telescope in Chile uh, for doing imaging. Alfred Hensch telescope is used also as a test site to try new observational approaches and techniques prior to apply these at bigger telescopes, like very large telescope of the European Southern Observatory. And for example, last year, together with Hamburg, we, uh, or Hamburg uh, Observatory, developed a new device how to uh, measure the orientation of the spin axis of stars. Mm -hmm. And in principle they want to bring this new uh, equipment to the v uh, VLT, but of course they needed a telescope uh, where they could develop it. So they came here and installed it in the CUDE spectrograph and we took uh, first measurements just to show that the whole uh, method works. 
Besides scientific observations, the Tautenberg Observatory cooperates with the University of Jena and other European universities, providing the site for educating young And the third application is also, say, a student's education. We are not that far from the University of Jena um, and actually we teach at the University of Jena and the students from there have the possibility to uh, do really hands-on uh, astronomy by uh, really going here and carrying out uh, projects and so on. And that's very attractive. We also offer these possibilities for students of other universities. Besides main 2-meter telescope, Carl Schwarzschild Observatory has also a small survey robotic telescope called TEST, Tautenberg Exoplanet Search Telescope, 30 cm in diameter, which saw its first light in 2005 and serves now to survey the sky and also participates in collaboration with other scientific organizations of Germany and Europe. Next to the domes of Alfred Jensch and TEST robotic telescope, you can see the site of the LOFAR International Project. This is a network of radio telescopes to observe the sky at the frequencies less than 250 MHz. Now, after more than 50 years of its scientific career, the main telescope of the Tautenberg Observatory is in excellent shape. Fully automated, using the advanced technologies, the telescope in cooperation with other organizations allows astronomers of the observatory fulfill researches even for such a complicated for observations from the center of Europe objects like exoplanets. Stay tuned, there are much more 